Howdy my totally as always to be the gamers are back with you guessed it another video Thanks for coming back to the channel if you're new here Maybe stick around for a while. I got a fun video for you today We're gonna be talking about the Marvel vs. Capcom fighting collection and honestly, I'm so psyched to be talking about this collection. I still can't believe this is real. This is something I've wanted for such a long time. I've made it very clear on my channel that I love classic fighting games by Capcom. I ranked every single fighting game ever by Capcom, and near the top of that list is a bunch of the classics. Games like Marvel vs. Capcom 2 are some of my favorite games of all time, and I've been begging, pleading for Capcom to please re-release them on modern platforms. Like, yeah, I've still got the game on my 3 60 but nobody's playing that version and it really just needs to be more widely available and i'm not alone in thinking this free mvc2 has been trending for years the fighting game community has wanted marvel vs capcom 2 to come back but at a certain point it just seemed like it wasn't going to happen but then one day we got a nintendo direct and everything changed Marvel was back, and this was better than we could have even imagined. Not only was MVC2 coming back, but all of the classic Marvel games were coming back in this brand new collection. And X-Men Children of the Atom, Marvel Super Heroes, X-Men vs. Street Fighter, Marvel Super Heroes vs. Street Fighter, The Punisher Arcade Game, Marvel vs. Capcom, and MVC2 all back in this collection. Here we are just a few months later and the collection is about to come out. I do want to give a major shout out to Capcom for hooking me up with this collection a bit early. It is very much appreciated. I've really been looking forward to something like this for such a long time. And I will just say immediately, this is a fantastic collection. This is easily the definitive way to play any of these games. They're widely accessible with online play. You can switch between the Japanese and American versions. There's tons of filters and display options, and there's a bunch of extras in the museum. Like, this is just an excellent collection. If you've ever been interested in the Marvel vs. Capcom series or fighting games really in general, this collection just immediately is like a must-buy. It's like crazy good you get seven classics so for today's video i thought to myself how should i cover this collection i could just do a basic overview like a review of the collection as a whole but i thought it would be a bit more fun to actually rank all seven of the games on this collection from worst to best i thought that might fit my style of video a bit more but if you came here just to find out if the collection is good or not i'll spare you the details and just say, this collection is fantastic, go get it before it gets delisted. But, for everybody who's sticking around, please like, share, comment, subscribe. I got the Patreon and the Super Thanks, any support is truly greatly appreciated. So, of these 7 games, which do I think is the weakest? This might be a little bit of a hot take, but I think the weakest game in this collection is Marvel Super Heroes. I want to make it clear there is no bad game in this collection. There's not even a game that's close to bad. It's just when you stack them all up for a ranking, yeah, I think the weakest is Marvel Super Heroes. And you might even go, really? You'd even rather play Children of the Atom over Marvel Super Heroes? Yeah, I'd rather play Children of the Atom. But don't get it twisted, Marvel Super Heroes is still a good fighting game. It's got a good roster. The roster is honestly better than Children of the Atom. There's a bit of variety. You can still very easily come back to this game and it'll feel nice. It's aged incredibly well. The presentation is great. The music kicks ass. And there's actually a decent amount of depth to this game still. So why is it the weakest for me? Well, compared to a lot of the other games on this list, the depth in roster just isn't there. But the main reason I have Marvel superheroes at the bottom is because of this game's main gimmick, the Infinity Stones. We're all familiar with the Infinity Stones at this point, but this was way, way before Thanos had them. And they are like the main gimmick to this game. They show up during the fights and you can actually use them. They'll give you powers like regenerating health or super armor where you clone yourself and you can even knock them out of your opponent and use them yourself. And I just have really never been big on this gimmick. I never really liked the stones. I thought they felt like just a cheap little addition thrown in there at the last second to make it feel a little different from X-Men Children of the Atom. And playing this game all these years later for this collection, it really reaffirmed my belief where I'm like, I just don't really care for this. Of course, you could try to ignore the stones or not use them, but the AI sure is shit gonna use them. And then if you're not using them in multiplayer, I mean, yeah, it really is basically just Children of the Atom with a few different characters. And the characters that do appear in both games play nearly identical. The fighting is still good, it feels nice, and you can have some fun with it. But I truly feel like all the other games in this collection are better than Marvel Super Heroes. 
I already brought it up a few times, but here we have X-Men Children of the Atom. Look, when it comes to this game and Marvel superheroes, they're absolutely neck and neck for me, and I feel like certain days I prefer Children of the Atom, and some days I prefer Marvel superheroes. Today, I'm preferring Children of the Atom. This was Capcom's first fighting game to feature Marvel characters, and it is exclusively X-Men characters, so the roster is pretty decent if you like X-Men but it certainly isn't as varied as Marvel superheroes, but I still like it nonetheless. When it comes to how this game feels, yeah, it actually feels pretty similar to really all of the other Marvel fighting games by Capcom. They all have a similar feel, and if you've played any of them, you'll be able to pick this up no problem. It does feel a little stiffer than, say, MVC, but it doesn't feel bad at all. The game has a decent amount of depth. There's some combos. I'd say it plays the closest to, like, Darkstalkers. And when it comes to this game's speed, yeah, Darkstalkers is comparable. So all of that is good, but I will say that this game doesn't really stand out all that much from all the other fighting games of the 90s outside of the fact that it is all about the X-Men. This is the only X-Men only fighting game, at least by Capcom, and that really is its identity. I'll also say this game is hard as fuck in the arcade mode. Juggernaut just whooped my ass so many times I forgot how hard this game actually gets. But despite feeling a little shallow at times, especially when compared to MVC, this is still an enjoyable fighting game that should be tried by anybody that likes the X-Men or you wanted to see really where MVC got its roots. It started all the way back here with Children of the Atom. And so here we have the only non-fighting game in the collection, and that is the Punisher arcade game. Now, I had never tried this game prior to playing this collection, but I'm pretty glad I did. I like beat-em-ups. There are plenty of beat-em-ups I come back to throughout the years, like Streets of Rage 2 or 4, and plenty of the TMNT games. I think this is one I might be coming back to, because it's actually a good amount of fun. It stars the Punisher and Nick Fury, if you have a second player, and it's about them just kicking ass. They're really going up against the Kingpin and all of his goons, so when it comes to to the beat em up action this game's got the goods there are two attack buttons but one of them is a special move that actually does take some of your life but those moves absolutely kick ass the other button is just kind of your standard attack but there are plenty of different attacks outside of the basic punch it depends on where you're standing relative to the enemy like if you're next to them if you're slightly above them etc there's a little bit more depth here than just pressing one button over and over there is also weapons you can pick up and you even get guns at a few points, and these guns, yeah, they absolutely kill. And speaking of kill, you're probably going to be killed, because this has old school arcade difficulty where the enemies can just totally gang up on you, and then the bosses absolutely annihilate you. The bosses do so much damage, it's not even funny. But you got infinite continue, so I mean, it's really not the end of the world. This is a solid, like, hour of fun, and it's... Pretty brief, so you're not going to get sick of the gameplay, it's not going to feel repetitive or get old because it ends. And if you're by yourself, it's fun, but with two players, it's even better. If you're going to be playing this collection, there's a good chance somebody else is going to be playing it with you, and so I think it's worth trying the Punisher Arcade game again. It's so quick that you'll finish it in like under an hour, so you might as well just try it. It's got a good presentation and the beat em up gameplay, it's pretty good. It's not going to win any awards for depth or longevity, but I had fun with it, and that really is the most important thing when it comes to a game like this. And so here we have X-Men vs. Street Fighter. So this is really when the Marvel vs. Capcom series got started. This was the first crossover between Marvel and Capcom characters, and as the title implies, it was just X-Men characters and just Street Fighter characters with most of those X-Men characters returning from Children of the Atom, and then when it comes to the Street Fighter characters, yeah, they've been pulled in from what I'm guessing is like Street Fighter Alpha 2, but it's all under a cohesive art style that actually really works. I love how this game looks. I really love how all of these games look, but this game, it has a very nice art style, and when it comes to the gameplay, yeah, it feels pretty similar to MBC. It feels a little stiffer, and there's not as much depth, but if you've ever played a Marvel vs. Capcom game and you come back to this, you'll feel right at home. So this game introduced the tag mechanic to the series where you actually pick two characters and switch between them on the fly and the character you even have in your reserves can actually get a little bit of health back. It was a unique mechanic that is still very much used even nowadays. Obviously this has been heavily heavily expanded on but it's cool to see its roots and just how well implemented it was literally right from the beginning. It works well here switching between the characters is cool and it adds a bit more depth and variety to the game overall. When it comes to its speed it's a bit faster than children of the Atom and Marvel superheroes, but I think it feels nice. It definitely feels a bit more like a Street Fighter game than a Marvel vs. Capcom game, especially when it comes to the button inputs, but the game overall still has a very nice feel, a nice aesthetic, the roster is pretty solid, 
But what I'm trying to say is, while this game wasn't revolutionary and it really was the start of a formula that would slowly be perfected over the next few games, this is still a pretty good game. You can still have a fun time with it, there's a decent amount of depth, and it's easy to come back and enjoy. It's probably aged better than you even realized, and so with that, I'm glad it's been re-released. And here we have the follow-up, Marvel Super Heroes vs. Street Fighter. So this game is incredibly similar to X-Men vs. Street Fighter, like how Marvel Super Heroes was incredibly similar to X-Men Children of the Atom. Here, we have a varied roster of Marvel characters. It's not just Street Fighter. Other characters like Spider-Man and Captain America get to show up here. But when it comes to the Street Fighter side, it's pretty much the same. And I think it's a pretty good roster. It's a better roster than X-Men vs. Street Fighter. And there certainly is a bit more depth. I mean, if my man Spider-Man and Hulk are showing up, you know it's going to be a good time. And when it comes to good time, that's the fighting. The fighting feels really nice. It feels basically the same as X-Men vs. Street Fighter. It's a little faster, and it feels like the team mechanics are a little bit better implemented, but when it comes to like the presentation and the feel, yeah, it pretty much is the same. It feels more like an expansion on the previous game rather than like an entirely new game. And I really just don't have all that much more to say. If you've played any Capcom fighting game from the 90s, you're going to be able to pick this game up and understand it with no problem. If you've played literally any of the other games in this collection, you'll have no problem playing this game. It's a good time. I'd rather play it than the prior game, and it was just another step to the amazing MVC games. Speaking of... Here we have the first Marvel vs. Capcom. This game really took Marvel Super Heroes vs. Street Fighter and just kind of expanded on it a bit. They have a bunch of Marvel characters. They have more than just Street Fighter when it comes to the Capcom side. Plenty of other Capcom characters show up here like Strider, like Mega Man. And it doesn't just feel like you're playing a Street Fighter game with some Marvel characters in it. No, the game really has its own unique identity and feel. You still pick teams of two, but you also get to have an assist character that you can summon at any point to do a quick attack. And when it comes to the summonable characters, there's actually a bunch of fan service. A bunch of characters from the prior games show up, but there's a bunch that have never actually been playable that are pretty cool to see. When it comes to the roster, yeah, it's better than any of the games I just previously mentioned. And it, this is when the roster started to get pretty kick-ass. This is when I really started getting into the roster. I was like, man, there's a bunch of characters that I don't even know what they're from, but they seem really cool. And I ended up getting into their series. And this game was really a gateway for me. And then when it comes to the fighting, yeah, it really is an expansion on the prior few games. It feels nice, it's got a good flow to it, the speed is actually getting pretty up there. And it really does feel like a Marvel vs. Capcom game. The team mechanics are great, you can swap in and out with no problem. And the fights have a really great pace to them. I'm not going to act like this is the most balanced game in the world. This game is notoriously unbalanced. But all these years later, what I can say is that this game is still a blast. It holds up incredibly well. It has a nice feel. It's still a fun time. And if you're just looking to try some Marvel vs. Capcom and, you know, you don't immediately jump to the other one, this game still is a lot of fun. There's actually some merit here in trying the original MVC because it does feel quite different from the other games. And I still think it is worth your time. While it wasn't the best best game in this collection, it was still a lot of fun. And then here we have it. It was crazy obvious from the moment I even started talking in this video. The best on this collection is Marvel vs. Capcom 2. Most people are buying this collection for Marvel vs. Capcom 2. All the other games are pretty cool and all, but none of them are MVC 2. Marvel vs. Capcom 2 is not only one of the greatest fighting games of all time, but it legit is one of my favorite video games of all time. I've been playing this game for like 20 years now and it just never fucking gets old. It's so much fun. Every time I boot it up, all these years later, I'm like, oh, this game is still mad good. The roster is just unmatched. It is so ridiculously good. There's so many characters. Like, the roster alone makes this game as good as it is. Like, everyone returns from the prior Marvel games, there are some new characters here, and almost everyone feels pretty different from each other. There are a few characters that feel similar to each other, but for the most part, yeah, everybody's got a unique moveset, and man, when it comes to the fighting, it is just so much fun. Instead of 2v2, it is now 3v3, and they actually move down to a 4-button system instead of it being a 6-button fighter. The other two buttons have to do with assists, where you can call in the other people to come help you assist with combos or to try to use as a c -c -c combo breaker but there's a nice risk versus reward as they can get hurt and they take like double damage if they get hit when you ask them to assist you can switch between the other two characters pretty much at any time but there is tech that exists where you can make it so they can't actually switch out there's a ton of depth with this fighting in fact when it comes to mvc2 in depth it feels almost unmatched it's ridiculous thanks to the just massive roster how many different combinations you can have 
and just how many different ways literally every single fight can go, it becomes just frankly absurd. Like this game is just the king of fighting games for a reason. It still feels fantastic. All these years later, like it still feels really good. Sure, fighting games have gotten a bit smoother throughout the years, but like MVC2, Mm, this shit still feels good. You can still do some crazy ass combos and it's just as unbalanced as ever. Sentinel is still way too fucking good. But at this point, I really wouldn't want anything else. I just love this game, warts and all. I think the game looks fantastic still. It is a great art style that is aged incredibly well. And then the soundtrack, dude, the soundtrack to Marvel vs. Capcom 2 is like crazy iconic. It is so good. I could legit listen to it for hours and hours. This game just has seemingly endless replayability at this point. I've been playing it for gosh knows how long, and I'm just so glad that it's back. It's back, it's widely accessible, you can play online with friends, like this is just fantastic. This is what everybody has wanted for many years now. We've all wanted Marvel back, Marvel's back, it's just as good as before. This is the definitive way to play this game. And I hope it introduces a lot of new people to this game. It's a classic for a reason. It's one of my favorite games of all time. It might be my favorite fighting game of all time. It's certainly up there and there's a reason for it. It's really that damn good. And that's how I'm ending this video. This collection is fantastic. Thank you again to Capcom for sending it to me. I was really excited for this. Like, just a fantastic collection through and through with some amazing games that are totally worth your time if you like fighting games. And so, if you made it to the end of this video, I need you to comment Sentinel as in the character because we're not going to play as Sentinel when we're playing MVC2. He's just way too good. He kicks hella ass. And I kind of forgot just how busted at times he can be. Anyway. That's it, so everyone stay safe. Bye-bye.